got another exam question walkthrough for A-level chemistry. So this one's acids, bases and pH and it's number 17 in the playlist. Question deals with Kw, calculating the pH of a strong alkali and some reactions of acids including writing equations. Obviously this uh, walkthrough is suitable for all of the major exam boards. And as always the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so make a start. So first part of part A, we've got to calculate the pH of water at 40 degrees C. So you can see I've highlighted the Kw value for that temperature. And I've also written up the Kw expression, which we're going to simplify to Kw equals the H plus concentration squared. And we can do that because for the water, the H plus concentration and OH minus concentrations are the same. So for any pH calculation, we've got to calculate the H plus concentration, which is going to be equal to the square root of Kw. So all we need to do is put that value in for Kw, find the square root, which comes out at 1.709 times 10 to the minus 7 moles per decimeter cubed. All we've got to do now is minus log that number which to two decimal places comes out at 6.77 for the pH. And for the last part of part A, why is the water neutral at these temperatures? Well, we've already mentioned that the H plus concentration is the same as the OH minus concentration. Moving on to part B, so the equation for strontium and water, I've written up already. Any group two metal reacts with two moles of water to form the metal hydroxide and hydrogen. So we're moving on to the calculation now. So the first thing we're going to do is calculate the moles of strontium hydroxide, SROH twice, in that um, 250 cm cubed of water. So that's obviously just a mass over MR calculation, 1.19 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. Um, I'm keeping the full number in the calculator, but reporting it to three significant figures for the answer. Next thing I want to do is work out the moles of OH minus ions. So it's obviously double the moles of SROH twice. So that's 2.38 times 10 to the minus 3. And now I need to turn that into a concentration of hydroxide ions. So that's those moles divided by the volume they're in. Just remember that 250 cm cubed needs to be put into dm cubed. So I'm dividing by 0.25, which comes out at 9.54 times 10 to the minus 3 moles per decimeter cubed of OH minus ions. So next thing we need to do is work out the H plus concentration. So we're going to bring in the Kw expression. So obviously that's going to rearrange for H plus concentration at Kw over the hydroxide ion concentration. And now we're just subbing the values. Remember Kw, we need to use the value for 40 degrees C and we've just calculated the hydroxide ion concentration. So that's coming out at 3.06 times 10 to the minus 12 moles per decimeter cubed for the H plus concentration. All we've got to do now is minus log that and give our answer to two decimal places, which gives a pH of 11.51. So very well done if you got that one right. Moving on to part C. So the reaction of strontium carbonate with nitric acid looks like that. Moving on to the next part, so the students reacted the same mass of a different carbonate of group two, so calcium carbonate uh, for this second part, uh, still with an excess of dilute nitric acid. Why, do this, why does the student get different volumes of gas? Well, it's all down to the MR um, of the carbonates and therefore the moles that are present. So for my answer, I'm talking about the calcium carbonate having a lower MR then strontium carbonate, you can obviously explain this the other way around. So one gram of calcium carbonate contains more moles than one gram of strontium carbonate. So calcium carbonate is going to produce more gas. And finally, part D. So the ion equation for magnesium with any acid. So obviously the magnesium is reacting with the H plus ions from the acid and it's generating the Mg2 plus ion and hydrogen. And moving on to the final part, so I'll break it down into the three parts for those three marks that are available. Well, the first thing we need to talk about is the nature of the acid. So HCl is strong, so it's fully dissociated. Ethanoic is weak, so it's partially dissociated. 
Next thing we need to mention is because of that nature of dissociation, the HCL has a greater H plus concentration, so it's going to have more frequent collisions with the magnesium. And then the last thing we need to talk about is the fact that they're both monobasic, so ultimately you've got the same total moles of H plus ions present. That's because you've used the same concentration of volume for each acid. It's just taken longer for the H plus ions to all be produced in the ethanoic acid because of that partial dissociation. Remember, I've got hundreds of these things, lots of different topics covered, and if you haven't already subscribed, why don't you consider subscribing to the channel? Cheers.